in last lecture we talked about the love story of sodium and glucose and we discussed how the rich sodium is helping the poor glucose to get entry into the proximal tubule cells and reach the peritubular capillaries the blood but then we discussed that there is always a limit and when the glucose crosses all the limits the rides of the sodium are fully occupied and they are no more available for glucose and sodium cannot help after those limits and the limit was known as transport maximum now as we are discussing active transport so basically transport maximum is exhibited by the those substances which are absorbed actively which are absorbed actively for example glucose although glucose is reabsorbed actively from the tubule from the tubule of the nephrons into the peritubular capillaries but it is not a primary active reabsorption it is secondary active reabsorption because it is taking help of sodium energy and power is with the sodium and the rides are also basically these rides also belong to sodium so whenever sodium the rides of the sodiums are available glucose will be using them but when glucose lim crosses the limits then sodium will not be helping and these rides won't be available and sodium glucose and glucose cannot get entry into the cells of the proximal tubule and blood and that limit is transport maximum now there are some substances in the nephron tubules there are some substances in the nephron tubules which are not absorbed actively it means energy is not required for their reabsorption now those substances are reabsorbed and they do not exhibit transport maximum there is no limit and they can be reabsorbed in huge amount without a transport maximum but transport maximum is due to the carrier proteins due to carrier proteins and due to the activity of pump which is utilizing energy now if a substance is dependent for reabsorption if a substance is dependent for reabsorption from the proximal tubule into the blood on its concentration if it is dependent upon its concentration or its charge or its permeability and the amount of time it is spending in the tubule then that process is known as gradient time transport gradient time transport so those substances which are not Uh, directly dependent on active process energy consuming process and which are not dependent on a carrier proteins they do not exhibit a transport maximum rather they exhibit a reabsorption through gradient time transport it means if they have a concentration gradient if big amount of concentration is present in the tubule and small amount is here so that flow will occur from larger side toward the lower side and that will be concentration gradient similarly if a lot a big number of charge is present here and small amount of charge is present In, on the other side then charge from this side will flow toward the smaller size and that will be charge gradient chemical gradient so the gradient can be concentration gradient or chemical gradient similarly the re reabsorption is also dependent upon the amount of time that it spends in the tubule if some substances are slowly moving if they are moving slowly then the chance of reabsorption from this tubule into the blood is high so it is a gradient time transport and it is not a transport maximum and basically <coughs> basically those substances are not actively reabsorbed rather they are passively reabsorbed their reabsorption is also dependent upon the permeability of this membrane now this membrane is showing the membrane of proximal tubules so if this membrane is permeable or and it is allowing their reabsorption then they will be reabsorbed and if it is not allowing then they will not be reabsorbed now coming to the point there are some substances for example sodium which is reabsorbed actively it is reabsorbed actively but still it is not showing transport maximum it is not showing transport maximum it is because we have discussed previously that the reabsorption of sodium from the tubular lumen from the lumen from the lumen into the blood occurs because on the lateral surface there are pump sodium potassium pump this pump is throwing sodium out so the amount of sodium in the cell decreases so more sodium from the tubular lumen get entry into the cell and it is basically an active process now activity is shown by this pump because this pump is utilizing energy so this is an active transport but still but still this reabsorption of sodium from the tubular lumen into the cell and into the interstitial space is not a is basically not following transport maximum rather it is following the gradient time transport because the energy the power or the activity of the sodium potassium pump is always high it is always high and the reabsorption of sodium is not limited due to the activity of the sodium potassium pump the energy of this pump never decreases so much that it will limit the reabsorption of sodium from tubular lumen into the interstitial space and then into the blood rather the amount of sodium that is thrown out of the cell into the space that sodium somehow starts leaking through the intercellular spaces and through the tight junction again into the tubule and 
this concentration somehow decreases again and the reabsorption of sodium basically remains dependent on the concentration and the chemical gradient in the amount of time sodium is spending here and it never remains dependent on this pump because this pump is capable of doing more it is always capable of doing more and it has more power and the reabsorption is not limited due to the carrier proteins rather the reabsorption of sodium is limited due to their concentration now the reabsorption of sodium from this intracellular space through the tight junction is also basically dependent on the permeability of these tight junctions and the force with which this sodium is moving from the interstitial space into the blood. If a lot of sodium is not entering into the blood and if the permeability of this tight junction is low, then sodium will start moving here. Sodium will start moving here rather than going into the blood. So the concentration will keep on increasing and this leaking of sodium will become the limiting factor in the reabsorption of sodium from the tubule into the blood and not the carrier protein. In case of transport maximum, the carrier protein became the limiting factor as for glucose. When all the carrier proteins were occupied, when the ride sharing was stopped, then glucose started appearing in the urine. Now, as we know that inside the nephrons, there are a lot of segments of the nephrons, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule. Now the permeability of tight junctions, the permeability of tight junctions in all these segments is not the same. When the permeability, if the permeability is high in the proximal tubule, then the sodium may be able to leak through the tight junctions. But as the, the fluid go along the tubule, the permeability through the tight junctions, the permeability of sodium through tight junctions decreases because along the tubule, the tight junctions in the distal tubules become more tight and they will not allow, they will not allow the sodium to leak back. So in that case, the, the sodium potassium pump may become a limiting factor. But most of the time in the proximal tubule, the pump or the carrier proteins may, ne may never become the limiting factors and the sodium, although reabsorbed actively, it is still showing gradient time transport rather than transport maximum. Now we also discussed the, the graph of the transport maximum and we discussed that in transport maximum, when something, something is filtered, when something is filtered in the nephron, it is being reabsorbed as well, but within certain limits. If the limits are crossed, then if it is filtered, it will not be reabsorbed. It will not be reabsorbed. Rather, at that limit, it will start getting excreted in urine. And that level is known as transport maximum, as was discussed in the case of sodium, glucose. Sorry. Thanks a lot for watching the video.